Hi, my name is Leland Calloway. I'm a local art enthusiast and collector. Today, I'm here with Valerie Mercer, curator and department head for the General Motors Center of, for African American Art at the DIA. That's the Detroit Institute of Arts. The Detroit Artist Market, also known as DAM, had an all media exhibition this year for 2021. The Detroit Artist Market is a nonprofit gallery committed to contemporary art and to connecting artists, collectors, and community. DAM produces a full schedule of exhibitions featuring new and established artists from Detroit and the metro region. Jury shows, curated exhibitions, and market style shows provide a wide variety of opportunities for artists to show and sell their work. Artists take a two-third commission on all art sales, meaning more dollars go out in the community and directly to local artists. DAM also provides the community with an inviting and accessible place to learn about and purchase art. At this time, I'd like to welcome Valerie. Hi, Valerie. How are you doing today? Hi, Leyland. Good to see you. You too. Valerie, this is the first time a DIA curator has juried a Detroit Artist Market show since Sam Wagstaff, the DIA curator of Modern Art, did it in 1970. What was your experience like during this show with works from such an eclectic group of artists and all media? Oh, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, I've known um, the director for a number of years because he used to work at the DIA. So we're friends. And uh, I was delighted when he called me to curate the show. And I love the opportunity because it gave me a chance to see work by a wide range of artists, you know, diverse uh, backgrounds, uh, diverse, you know, most of them were are, uh, trained, but some uh, had lengthy years of training, some not so much, but um, I, I, I just enjoyed it because it was such a, a nice wide range, you know, and I mainly just went by my eye you know what i thought was was good and uh, uh worthwhile it doesn't mean i mean there there were so many wonderful ones i probably would have put more in if we had more wall space <laughs> your first time during the show that they're kind of all media like this uh not really i mean i i i've done it in other 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 times like in my career uh but this is different because, you know, museums just function differently and, and to a great, great extent, they, they often have very defined um, sort of standards for an exhibition. You know, you're going by, say, maybe an art historical theme or something like that. This was so wide open that, you, you know, you could pick uh, work having such a wide range of, of themes. And that also made it really, you know, enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, and just to see what artists were thinking about, because uh, I did did think about, about the fact that, you know, all of us have been dealing with the pandemic. And this is one of the ways that some of these artists have been dealing with it, even though very few of them, hardly any of them did anything related to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But it just showed how they kept themselves busy as artists doing what they usually do <laughs> is, you know, creating art. In the past, we've had discussions where you told me that most artists create based on their experience, whatever that may be. Did you notice any common themes in the works you saw? Well, I, I guess what um, I thought was, I, I, th I think they were really sharing with us the kind of subjects they are interested in and what they like to paint. Mm -hmm. You know, some were, uh, I, I think, um, you know, sort of even like mundane objects, like showing things uh, sitting at a, a table, uh, a, a coffee table, or um, ha having uh, brunch or something with friends. But they were sometimes so beautifully painted mm -hmm. that, and, and I like things like that. I mean, I like still life painting with, you know, objects. Uh, but then some showed people, 
uh, maybe these were friends or people they thought would make a good subject. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, I enjoyed those because uh, some of them did such a good job. Uh, you know, some of them were representational artists, uh, but then some did, you know, abstraction. And there's, there was certainly a variety of um, abstract styles that were shown in the exhibition. And I love abstraction too. So I, I think I think pretty diversely about styles and what I think is important for now because that is what the contemporary art world is about. It's much more accepting uh, of a wide variety of styles and approaches. There were three best in show artists in this exhibition. I'd like to discuss two of them. The first is Ian Matchy. Can you tell me your impressions of his work? Yeah, I chose uh, Ian's uh, work uh, because um, I just thought he had really excellent um, skills as a artist who specializes, it seemed to me in, um, you know, representation or figurative art. And uh, I just enjoyed looking at uh, the paintings he submitted, but I did pick one of the paintings that, you know, to receive the award. Um, but, uh, and I just liked the, uh, um, look of the young man in the painting. He just looks so relaxed yeah. and, you know, look kind of like um, uh, he was enjoying himself posing yeah. for the painting. But again, I just thought um, Ian's uh, uh, skills were re really top notch. And he just presented, I thought, a beautiful, um, relaxed image of a young man. Yeah, I noticed that the young man in the painting was wearing an Arab American National Museum shirt. I'm not sure a lot of people know that that museum exists. He just looks like a relaxed young man hanging out on the Monday afternoon. Uh, I think Ian's uh, his three entries were uh, had you, you know depicted people of various races, uh, and they were just so beautifully done. But this was my one of my um, I, I don't want to say favorites because my favorites change all the time, but uh, I definitely enjoyed looking at this painting of this young man. Looks like looks like people I know. <laughs> like like well, I felt like he could come alive any second. You know, he just looks so natural and real. Yeah. But I just thought beautifully painted. Yeah, I I know how hard that is to do too. Yeah, it's very. Yeah, I, I've been an art student and I know, <laughs> I know the kind of skills you have to have to produce something like that. Next, we have Chris Chan. Please tell us what struck you about this one. I liked his photography because I he focused on, you know, aspects of, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, what you could look at, like this bridge on the right behind me. Uh, Again, something that's uh, mundane and we see it all the time, yeah. but getting up close to it and the sort of, I thought beautiful sharp image he produced, you know, makes it look kind of like a work of art. Like it could be, you know, like a hard edge abstract painting, although it isn't. <laughs> but I, I like, like the form, the way he set up, the, uh, um, s sort of how he cropped it and all, you know, I just, like looking at things like how things are made, like like uh, this bridge with all the nuts and bolts and all that and the underside of it. I love bridges. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also liked uh, the one uh, sort of in the middle there. That is the one I picked to actually receive the prize. Um, it's like these uh, two windows uh, looking out sort of in the distance where you could see uh, other things um, in the city, but I also felt um, he got these variations in, um, you know, light and shade, and I felt that it looked to me like um, it, it really took some skill to do all that, to balance all of that, and, and have everything uh, come up sort of clear and sharp, um, and so I just thought uh, technically he had done a great 
job. And it was, you know, it was something I liked looking at. And I even liked the, um, you know, what is that, the, the pole there, I, I, you know, with wires on it. Um, but I, I, I li like what uh, these images kind of just, uh, you sort of imply to me that he, he's taking some things we look at that are so kind of ordinary for us but he's uh, turning them into art, the way he presents them, the way he composes uh, the image and all. But I thought he was a very good photographer. Yeah, one thing I noticed was the composition of the work. One thing that's important in art is to know how to edit your work, I guess, and give the observer the important information and context without overloading your senses. Yeah, and that takes a lot of experience, you know, uh, doing that just really often with your eye mm -hmm. but you know I, I know that uh chris has been doing this i don't know uh everything about chris's career uh but i know from others that he's an accomplished photographer uh but i didn't know any of that before <laughs> but i i would love to see more of his work because i really did enjoy looking at these a lot of artists in this show are what we call emerging artists. Some want to go from their day jobs to create art full time. What advice would you give an emerging artist to get their work to the next level? Our artists mainly know, I think, that they have to generally just sort of keep on working mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, improve their skills, which you do always over time and through hard work. Um, and also, um, you know, sometimes changing approaches, always trying to keep uh, your outlook, your 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 uh, outlook as an artist very fresh. Uh, notice noticing everything around you, um, and just changes really in the world. Uh, you know, in in the city, and in, in your own life even. Uh, but also, uh, you know, it's important for them to network. Uh, there's a young man here who uh, uh, I talked to and I invited him to the Detroit artist market so he could start to meet other artists, you know. Um, but I told him networking is very important, networking even with other artists as well as, you know, art dealers and curators, collectors, all that. Because you learn a lot from talking to those people and seeing what they're doing. Um, I think, you know, uh, being an artist takes uh, a great deal of uh, discipline. I think sometimes people think artists are, um, I hear people say things to me almost like artists are, you know, um, eccentric and all that. Most artists I know are highly disciplined. Mm -hmm. You know, if you wanna have a career to a great extent, you have to be, no matter how creative you are. Um, some artists teach uh that's another way that artists can you know can really help artists very well especially a lot of artists i know who um are really talented artists they also teach yeah i've noticed that a lot of great artists throughout history are teachers yeah i mean a number of artists we have in the collection are contemporary artists you you know they teach or have taught some are retired now mm -hmm. but I think they learn a lot too from their students, you know, that sort of give and take. Uh, and also keeps them keeps them updated on what younger generations are thinking. And it keeps them sharp uh, as far as their thinking. Um, you know, they, they do uh, critiques of uh, their students. They also invite people. I've done um, critiques, uh, especially when I was living in New York and an artist I New invited me to do that for his students. It was very enjoyable, you know, because I saw a lot, lot of really good work. But, uh, you know, uh, critiquing artists' work helps them a lot as well, too, you know. But mainly, they've got to, I think, see the see a lot of the the world around them and beyond. Mm -hmm. You know, I just do believe in that. Um, if you're going to be a creative person, you know, you have to be very open, you know, open to change. And, um, but, you know, uh, Detroit more and more is getting, you know, uh, new galleries. Um, certainly 
showing up in places like the Detroit Artist Market provides so many uh, wonderful opportunities like the openings and all are uh, a great way for artists to exchange you know, information and basically to network. Uh, but just always look at, look at art, you know, if you have chances to travel, uh, to see uh, exhibitions here as well as in other cities, that's always good. I have to do the same thing in my job, you know, I have to really, uh, even when I travel, I always go to museums. Mm -hmm. You know, people think like when we do courier trips, you know, we're, we're like, <laughs> we're, we're sitting somewhere in a cafe having a great time. Uh, but the reality of it is we're also expected to go to museums yeah. when we go on those trips. Because, you know, from, from doing it for years, you know, you're going to learn things when you go. And so that's always a, a, a real uh, a wonderful learning experience, you know, to grow, go and see the work of other artists, sometimes even in another country or in another city, mm -hmm. uh, and to tr try to understand that art scene, because, you know, they're all a little different. But mainly, I think artists just have to get out there. And um, basically, as well, though, uh, at the right times, just just keep working. Yeah. Here's a shot of the exhibition open. Thank you, Valerie, for your insights and great work on this wonderful exhibition. Well, it's been a pleasure, Leyland. You have a great afternoon, and I'll see you soon. You too. Take care of yourself. See you soon.